For International Women's Day this year, I want to talk about why I believe that women should cycle more often. Now, these things don't necessarily just apply to women, and many of them, if not all of them, also apply to men, but it's International Women's Day and fewer women cycle than men in this country. So that's why I'm talking about it with reference to women only. However, if you're a guy and you're watching, then hopefully this will be beneficial for you too. Let's get started. Number one, bikes offer freedom. If you live in an urban area and you're kind of on the fence about whether you need a car or not, then owning a bicycle instead can alleviate you of the need to have a car. This also can work in some rural areas or some kind of small villages and towns and things like that, especially if you have good public transport links that you can cycle to a train station. I've personally only owned a car for myself once in my life for a very short amount of time because I've more or less just cycled or used public transport or a combination of those things to get around. And this has saved me a phenomenal amount of money. Now, women still earn less in this country than men on average. So anywhere that you can alleviate that financial burden, you're doing really well. And that's not to say that you shouldn't have a car or can't have a car or don't need a car, things like that. But even if you have a car, if you also are a confident and happy cyclist, then that means you can use your bike more and use your car less. So save on wear and tear in the car, fuel, all of that kind of stuff. The second factor to that is that cars are really annoying. They break, they wear out, they're incredibly expensive to fix and you have to find somewhere to park, which is expensive often and also really difficult sometimes. Another part of why bikes equal freedom are because when you cycle, you get fitter and stronger. And when you're fitter and stronger, Everything else in your life is easier. Moving around is easier. Aging becomes easier. Everything is easier. You have more energy the fitter you are. You sleep better the more exercise you do. So when you integrate cycling in your life, not even just going out for proper bike rides, but just using your bike to get to work or using your bike to get to the supermarket or using your bike to go see a friend, then integrating it into your life just naturally makes you stronger and therefore everything else becomes slightly easier because you're physically stronger. Number two, when girls and teenagers see women on bikes, they know that they can also go and ride a bike. As they're saying, you can't become what you can't see. And while I don't always agree with that, I do really agree with it in this situation. I grew up cycling, watching my mum cycle everywhere. She raced, she cycled, as a commuting tool, she just was always on her bike. And so I was naturally very empowered to just get on a bike and go wherever I wanted to. So when women cycle more, they're naturally inspiring more girls, just, just see them go past. They're naturally inspiring those girls to potentially take up cycling later in life or realize that they can too, just get on a bike. Women are also on bikes, girls are also on bikes. They can see that. And so it becomes much more natural and much more of an everyday occurrence to them. Girls drop off an activity like the second they reach secondary school or something, it's horrifying. The amount of activity and sport that girls do just drops off a cliff for so many different reasons. But if we can more normalize girls and women riding bicycles, then hopefully we can alleviate some of that. Because girls want independence too, and bikes give them independence. They mean that when they're teenagers, they can go and cycle and see their friends. They don't have to rely on a lift or spending money on public transport. And if girls carry on riding bikes, that means more opportunities in the cycling and sport industries open up for them because they'll feel more naturally like they belong in those industries. Unlike now, where they might come from a completely non-cycling background and not feel like they can work in those kind of more active industries. And the more girls who become women who spend money in cycling industries, the more money the cycling industry have to grow and to be more beneficial to everybody. Number three, more women on bikes inspires more women to cycle. So it's not just that you're inspiring girls to get on bikes, you're also inspiring other women to get on bikes. And that is so valuable because so many adults in general, but particularly women, get to adulthood and think, well, I can't do anything that I haven't already learned how to do. This is a real issue. But if more women get on bikes and start cycling around and start having group rides and things like that, and just other women see other women on bikes, then that empowers them slowly but surely to be like, hang on a minute, I can also just go cycling. I can also get on a bike. I can also cycle to work. Cycling is also a fantastic way to socialize. It doesn't require you spending a ton of money, although cafe stops are always really fun. It's a great thing to do with your friends that you can just call them up and say, hey, do you fancy a bike ride? And again, I'm not talking about a 40, 50, 60 mile bike ride, although 
they are brilliant fun too. You can just go and cycle wherever you want to. There's not even just road cycling. You can also go to national forests and bike parks and things like that where you'll find really great trails and a real diversity of trails that you can either hire a mountain bike for or perhaps you've got a hybrid or a mountain bike anyway. Number four, cycling builds self-confidence and boy oh boy do we need some of that. There are lots of factors to cycling building self-confidence. These are the three that I find most interesting. A, cycling requires you to be quite vulnerable on the road. And the more you do it, the more confident you become as an equal road user to cars. Now this is obviously quite a controversial thing because a lot of drivers hate cyclists, even though <laughs> statistically, most adult cyclists are also drivers. And so it's not one against the other because these people there's a big Venn diagram bit in the middle of that. It can be very frightening, particularly in the UK, when you're cycling on a road if you're not that used to it and there's quite a lot of traffic around. But the more you do it, the more confident you'll be with your speed, with your bike handling, knowing what's going on around you, things like that. And you'll start becoming much more confident on the road and be able to hold your own space and act sensibly. B, cycling builds strength and strength builds self-confidence. When you can physically do something for yourself, then it's much easier to be more confident in general. It's much easier to know that you can get yourself out of a sticky situation or you can lift the heavy thing or you can do the physical thing that you need to do. The more physical strength you build also through cycling, the more that empowers you to go on to do different forms of exercise and not feel like you're starting off from an extremely physically weak point of view. And I'm not saying women blanket are physically weak at all. Uh, many women don't cycle, but they do plenty of other sport exercise, all sorts of different physical strength building activities but I am saying that cycling builds strength. So if you cycle on top of anything else you're doing, you will get stronger. Do you know what I mean? And C, cycling is mentally and physically challenging. Cycling is obviously physically challenging, you know? You're moving your body weight and the weight of the bike through space. If you're cycling up hills, that's hard. If you're cycling down hills, that can be really hard. As evidenced by my incredibly steep November cycle door. Ugh. But also the way in which cycling is physically challenging though is very controllable. You can obviously choose to cycle on a flat route. You can choose to add in hills if you want to. You are quite in control of that. Obviously that depends on the area that you live in. If you want to push yourself further but you live in a dead flat area then you can do a longer bike ride or go faster. If you live in a very hilly area and you want to make it easier then you can compress the distance or take more time to do the distance that you're going to do. And the mentally challenging part of cycling, well <laughs> When you're grinding up a hill, that can be incredibly frustrating and tiring and maybe you want to give up. Or maybe you've just been cut up by a car and now you're angry and you want to throw the towel in. Or perhaps it started raining and you are just not in the headspace to deal with that. There are plenty of mentally challenging parts of cycling. But when you do physically and mentally challenging things, you become much more resilient. And resilience helps you in every, every part of your life. It's just like building physical strength. Building mental strength and resilience will only help you improve every single other aspect of your life. It's absolutely fantastic. But again, you are quite in control of that. You can pick bike rides and routes that really, really suit you and will challenge you a little bit at a time and still get all those benefits. Fifth and finally, it just makes me really, really happy to see women on bikes any kind of bikes, whether they are mountain biking, road cyclists, whether they're cycle touring. I love it so much, it makes me so happy. And they probably have no idea why I'm grinning at them every time they cycle past. But if nothing else, then please just do it for me. Um, go cycling, you don't have to go far, or you can go really far. It's up to you. Happy International Women's Day, and I hope no matter who you are and no matter what background you are, this has inspired you to either cycle more, support the women in your life, support the girls in your life to get on bikes, to really enable that and empower them to do that too. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.